Hey y'all, I'm Elisa, the scrappy wife behind scrappywife.com and today I'm excited to share with you my 2021 craft room tour. I like to film a new craft room tour every year to share what my craft room is looking like these days, how it has changed, how it is functioning, um, and hopefully it will help inspire you in your craft space to really um, set it up for your creative success. I am also super excited to announce a brand new course that I have online that is all about how to organize your craft room, how to set it up so that it feeds your creativity, and I will have some exciting announcements about that course at the end of this video. All right, let's get to the tour. All right, so here is my craft room. It is located in one of our upstairs bedrooms. This room used to be purely a guest room. But we decided after some time that we weren't really using it that often as a guest room and I was needing to kind of expand my crafting space. So we moved uh, my desk into this room to give it a try and it's slowly grown since then. Okay, so we start out behind my door. I have a towel hanger that I use to hold this ladder. So this is a metal ladder that I picked up from Hobby Lobby a few years ago, and I use it to hold my specialty papers. Most of these are uh, marbled papers that I actually created myself on a trip to Italy that my husband and I took when we were celebrating our 10th anniversary. A new addition to my craft room would be this area. This is where I store all of my sprays. I love using sprays for mixed media. These acrylic shelves were given to me for Christmas. I will definitely link things that I can find down below. They are just perfect. They're perfectly sized. I think they're intended for nail polish, but they work fabulous for craft supplies. And then of course I have some Ikea spice racks that I have painted. The one on top holds my current journaling Bible that I reach for all the time. And then down below are some more art books and things that I use from time to time. My bookshelf over top that I'll show you in just a second was starting to get pretty full so I needed just a few more places to stash some of my favorite books. So here is the long bookshelf that I have that holds most of my favorite art books. So some of them are magazines, some of them are art journaling books, some of them are completed projects, and this is just an extra long picture shelf. I purchased it from Ikea and then I did Mod Podge over the top with some beautiful tissue paper to add a little character, and it's a great display for all of those items. Below that is one of my favorite pieces in my craft room, and that would be my card catalog. I picked this up at a thrift shop and it is just amazing. I love the small drawers. I've been <laughs> obsessed with small drawers since I was little. It's so hilarious, but they are just perfectly sized for lots of little bits and pieces. I have embellishment. You can see glitter, just all kinds of fun things, decorative breads, some different twine. There's a lot of fun things in here and it's um, great to keep organized. I have all of those labels made. I love my label maker. It is key when organizing a craft space. So I bought that and then my husband built this shelf down here. And this is currently where a lot of my planner supplies live and my printables. Let me show you those. So this past summer, I started getting really excited by Happy Planner, and you can see it kind of exploded a bit. These are um, previous Happy Planners, things I'm using bits and pieces of, and I started using these. So this is actually a pot holder, like a lid holder for your kitchen. It would hold plates or lids for different um, pots and pans, and it works great for planner storage or book storage because they stay upright. I can take one out without the rest falling over, and I actually have another one on my desk that I'll show you in a bit. Then my printables, a lot of people ask um, how I keep my printables organized. I go through a lot of printables. I have this clear acrylic container. Um, it's hanging files. And then you can see I have the files organized. I usually organize them by artist. And within here are separate file folders that um, hold my full sets. So those are really easy to get to. I actually usually just pull out that whole piece when I'm ready to file. 
down here are some extra filing, um, some extra planner supplies, I should say. These are heavy planner covers, some extra planners I have. These are just extra bins that are not currently being used. And then this is where I keep, I'm doing memory planning. And so I have some extra supplies in here that are specifically related to my big happy planner and my memory planner. So those are located right there. On top of the shelf is where I keep this beautiful acrylic container. It holds journals that I'm currently working in. So I have a few journals from Archer and Olive. These are from Paper House Productions and they are just current projects that I'm working with. This is just a decoration from Heidi Swap that I actually got in a Michaels clearance grab bag. So just for fun, here is my Faith Dex system that I keep. It's super cute. And then my Epson Picture Mate photo printer. I do all my photo printing at home um, just because I find it to be much, much easier for me and how I work. So I keep my printer out and accessible. Over here is a new addition to my craft room since the pandemic started. And this is my craft closet. So like I said, this was a guest bedroom. You can see on the floor where the closet doors used to be attached. And I had already taken them off and this was filled kind of just with random pieces of furniture from around my house and was holding a lot of different craft supplies. And my desire was to create a new filming area. And so that is what I did with this butcher block right here. So as you can see, I filled all of the inside of this closet with stick on wallpaper. This is just wallpaper from Target. It is so pretty. I love it. It's super bold. Yes, but it brings me a lot of joy in my craft room. And then my husband helped me install this butcher block. So we installed the butcher block top and then beneath it, we actually installed a faux top. So this one is wrapped in the same wallpaper so it a little bit disappears but it rests on these two storage pieces from Michaels and they provide me so much storage for a lot of things that I don't necessarily need all of the time but I love having them on hand this has been fantastic and because we had this gap I was able to get these bins so these are bins from Ikea I use them for this is a project bin mostly for digitals that I'm about to work with and I haven't cut up yet these are digitals that I'm wanting to keep on hand that I'm using for current projects and then I have one labeled for vinyl scraps after I am done with my cutting machines up top here are some floating shelves that we added in. These are just used up here just for storage for some old albums, my grandmother's sewing machine, just some random things up there. Over here I have an old laptop cover, Archer and Olive pens, mostly just the cases. You'll see the pens are somewhere else. This is a small trash can that I like to pull out when I'm crafting over here. And then some other supplies like my Easy Press. This is holding extra art supplies and some binders that I use for some different um, volunteer opportunities. Then I knew I wanted my cutting machines accessible but not taking up valuable desk space. So I came up with this solution. These are anchored shelves, they're anchored into the wall, and my silhouette, my new Cricut Maker that I just got for Christmas, and my Cricut Explore Air 2 all live up there. When I'm ready to cut, I just pull it down. You can see their cords are hanging right here. I have the cords labeled, so I just unhook that cord, plug it in, and then I have plenty of room to cut here on this butcher block. It works out so well. I have all my cutting supplies right here. Over here are my extra Cricut um, pens and markers for the infusible ink and then the regular Cricut pens. I have this spinning tower, which I got from Michaels that holds all of my Cricut tools. I purchased this from Michaels and then I customized it with my own knob just to add some extra character. I picked up this piece at a thrift fair in Texas and I use it just as an extra holder when I'm filming over here for scissors and pens and things like that. And then the other thing that makes filming over here super easy is this um, tower. So I'm able to plug in all kinds of things here. Um, you can see it has USB plugs and regular plugs and then it goes all the way around. So all of the lights that are over here are plugged into this and it works really well. I can bring all kinds of supplies and they are ready to go. You can see when I film over here, this is what I use to hold my phone. When I film, it is super strong and hard to move, which is 
fabulous for filming. And I also have these two ring lights. So I have one right here and one over here that I'm able to pull down and turn on to just provide extra lighting in that area. When I'm filming, it has worked great. I love being able to film over in this little corner of my room and not necessarily have to clear off my whole desk every time I'm ready to film something. Over here is where I have my vinyl rolls stored. This is actually from Ikea and it's meant to hold grocery bags so you can pull them out easily. And you've probably seen it a lot on Pinterest, a great way to hold your vinyl rolls and um, keep them organized. So somewhat in rainbow color, but divided by iron-on on on the bottom and permanent vinyl on the top. Then you also have my craft cart. So like I mentioned, I have been getting really excited about planning and planners. And so my planner collection and sticker collection has grown a lot in the past year. And so I actually moved all my planner stickers to this cart. It's from Michael's. I decorated it with some extra um, Mambi sticks. And I have this bar that makes it really easy to pull it out and pull it over to my desk when I need it. It has all my extra planner supplies, all of my different sticker books, of which I have a lot of happy planner sticker books. And I just love having all my planner supplies in one place. It makes it super easy when I'm ready to plan. All right, this is my bookshelf. I have had this bookshelf in my craft space forever. It is a Billy bookcase and I absolutely love it. I have bought custom shelves for it just so I could really maximize the space and it's awesome. So on the bottom, let's go from the bottom up. On the bottom, I have my current Bible studies, my study Bible, some illuminated scripture journals, and then my scrap box for when I am scrapping on the go. And then I have two shelves of stamps. So I organize my stamps in Avery L pockets. So I will link those. Um, I label them. I organize them by company, meaning I color code the back, the backing of the stamps. So all my buy the well for God stamps are in this purple. You can see I have the name of the stamp set and then the emblem that comes with it. So I have a lot of buy the well for God because I'm on their creative team. Over here would be my illustrated faith stamps. I have them in these clear containers that I picked up from Target. These are all alpha stamps. So there's different companies represented in here. This is where I keep Felicity Jane and paper person. And then these are just some miscellaneous stamps, a lot of Jane Davenport, some different ones in here. Then for smaller stamps, I actually keep my 3x4 stamps in their original packaging and I put them on large binder rings. Um, that helps me just be able to pull out and flip through. So I find, them, find it a really good way to organize them. And then these are some Tim Holtz stamps that are a little bit larger. And then of course, my stamp um, Tonic Studios stamping um, pad right there. All right, moving up, this is where I store all my washi tape. The first three I ordered from Amazon, and these are actually intended for eyeglasses, not washi tape, but they work perfectly. My washi tape is organized by color for the most part. When you get over here, we have metallics and glitter separated. And then this bottom one is all Paper House Studios. I am on their creative team, so I like having that separate so I know which ones are paper house and which ones are not. The last organizer on the end over there is from Michaels, just because it perfectly fit so that I could fill up that whole space, really maximizing the space on that bookshelf. Okay, moving up, this is the shelf that all my paper is stored on. So I love these folders. These are plastic folders that I discovered in the spring of 2020, and they are fantastic for organizing my 12 by 12 paper. So you can see I have them labeled by different companies. I have subscriptions to HipKit Club and Felicity Jane. So I always like my current HipKit Club to be kept separate. And then I organize my past kits um, after that, including scraps, Paper House Productions, and then some photo play, some of my favorite designers. Paper Person is another one I have a subscription to. Moving on through, you can see they're all clearly labeled. And then Felicity Jane, I have Felicity Jane scraps, patterns, solids, and then I always keep my current Felicity Jane kit together while I'm working with it. It's awesome because you can keep all of the different supplies together when you are working with a full kit and you can break it apart later on. I use these two magazine holders from Ikea to hold different 
um, solid colored paper. I tend to just get eight and a half by 11 solid colored just because I rarely need a 12 by 12 solid. And then I have a few collage papers from Dina Wakely and Jane Davenport over here that I use in art journaling a lot. Speaking of art journaling, here are my current art journals and my current traveler's notebook, some watercolor journals, some extra art journals. These are magazines, real simple magazines that I cut up and use for collage. And then here's where I keep all of my scrap papers. So I organize them. These are actually intended to be dry erase pockets. Um, I bought them at the Dollar Tree. I added extra clear pockets on the front for smaller scraps, and I organized my scrap paper by color. So whenever I'm looking for a specific color, I can just come pull it out, yellows and oranges, go through this, use what I have, and then put it back in. It works so well for me. It's really enabled me to use my scraps a whole lot more, and it's been a fantastic system. Okay, moving on up, just some extra storage. This is a piece that I've had since I taught elementary school. It's great for organizing office supplies. I picked it up at Home Depot. It's for small tools and bits and pieces like that. I just covered it with vinyl and um, did custom labels. And then this piece is actually intended as a jewelry organizer, but it works great for holding all my trinket trays. And I use trinket trays all the time in my crafting to hold different die cuts. I use them taking pictures on Instagram. So I like having them all accessible. Then as you move up, we just start getting into some extra backstock overflow storage. So these are empty traveler's notebooks waiting to be used. These are some paper house stickers. I keep those separate again because I'm on their creative team and I like to know which ones are from them. And then some extra journals, traveler's notebook covers, things like that. And then up top is where I have some more pieces that I use to help um, stage Instagram photos. And then this bin is my fun bin of extras. So I collect extra just fun pieces that I think that I could use for an art project at some point. So really cool boxes. You see some paper towel rolls. There's just kind of random pieces in there that I had an idea for. So I wanted to keep it and I just put it in a pretty basket so it doesn't distract, but I'm still able to keep those pieces in my craft room. All right. So now we can move over to my desk area. I love my desk. It's actually what I like to call a Franken desk. It's a combination of a few different pieces from Ikea that I customized to be exactly what I wanted them to be. And I absolutely love it. Um, in case you're wondering, the rug that I have is actually from Hobby Lobby last spring, maybe. Maybe it was on clearance over the summer. And I love having it there because I've absolutely torn up the carpet in this craft room. So it covers some of the stains that I've made in my crafty endeavors. So these two bins are from Ikea and they're actually meant to be trash bins. They're similar to the ones that hold bags, but these were meant to hold um, trash bags. And I have two of them. They hold my rolled paper and specialty paper, which works out great. Then I have some different sets of Alex drawers. So this is a set of Alex drawers. You can see labeled with what is inside. And I use it in conjunction with a couple of different desks from Ikea to create this huge L-shaped surface that I can work on. The two desks that I use are actually called uh, Miche, and I will link them below. They look exactly like this. And my husband and I had these desks. We had matching ones in our basement where our office used to be. I took both of them. One of them is turned backwards right here, and I used them as the base to hold two big tabletops that I purchased from Ikea. And then I was able to extend it out so that I could add these Alex drawers. My husband helped me cut some wood pieces here so that I could prop this up. It would be the same height, and it actually is the perfect little slot for my laptop to live in. And that just gave me so much work surface. I'm able to add this set of rolling drawers also from Ikea over here to the side and then a smaller one right here that's a file filing drawer and that is where my printer lives. So I was able to kind of customize this desk using pieces that I already had in my house and it gives me so much work surface and I've really 
worked to maximize the space. So for instance, I have that laptop space right there. I noticed that there was going to be space in between right here. So I had my husband help me make these little shelves that work perfectly. I have my big Fiskars paper cutter and then some different mats because um, I was able to grab them and keep them organized kind of like file folder style. Um, while we're down here, that is my trash can. And yes, it is decorated with vinyl. Um, just a trash can I picked up off of Amazon and had a really good time playing with my Cricut and really customizing it. And I think it's a lot of fun. So I'm not going to get too specific into what is in all these drawers. You can see they are all clearly labeled with um, permanent vinyl. So I have stamping and embossing right here. I love the Alex drawers. They pull out really far. And then in the next one, a ton of watercolors and gelatos. Then I have current projects. So I'm on a few different creative teams. And so I like keeping my projects all together. I have different project bins. This one is for Buy the Well for God. And then I have some different ones back here for some different companies. So just current projects that I'm working on right there. And then a couple of drawers with mixed media, different paints, different inks that I'm using, some extra sequins. And then the bottom one is more tool oriented, um, as well as some gesso down there and my alcohol inks down there in the back. My top drawer is where I keep most of my ephemera organized. So it is organized by color. Um, I also have some extra sets over here on the side that I have put in these small jewelry bags um, that works really well for keeping them together until I've used enough of it that I decide to go ahead and break it up, if that makes sense. So I like to keep the kits together so I know when pieces are going to match, when they're not going to match. And then as I get as it dwindles down, then I can start breaking it up through here. So I love having them right on hand because it makes me remember to use them. The closest thing I have to a junk drawer would be this one. And it's not super junky, but it's a little bit random. So I have all of my roller stamps in here. This is my lighter for the candles in my craft room. A must have for me would be chapstick all the time. I love Burt's Beeswax and also lotion. Um, that I keep in my craft room, some extra adhesive that I use frequently. And then these are paint cards, just some little tidbits here and there. My rulers are kept in here. So like I said, the closest thing to a junk drawer, but still pretty organized. And then in this one, this is a door that opens, I have some more pieces. So in the top is where I keep extra adhesive. Normally I'm stocked up on adhesive. Right now I'm running a little bit low. So this is normally filled with overflow adhesive. It also has my um, We Are Memory Keepers bookbinding kit. And this is also where I keep my go-to paintbrushes that I love and use all of the time. So they are right on hand. The section below is all Arteza pieces or Arteza craft supplies um, that they have sent me that I have used in videos. And then below that is where I keep my small paper pads in this bin. So you can see my six by six and six by eight paper pads organized. I actually, these are napkin holders from the Dollar Tree and they work really well for holding some of that loose, smaller paper in place. Okay, moving around the bottom of my desk area a little bit more. This is actually the box that my laptop came in and it happened to fit perfectly in this little slot, which is awesome. And that is where my um, iPad lives in my Apple Pencil box. And I'm able to plug it in when it's in there because there's electricity behind here and then put it away. So it's out of sight, which is awesome. And then I have two bins that are um, fitting in these shelves and these whole different supplies that I use again for staging photos for YouTube and Instagram. That's some of the heavier pieces. And down here in this gorgeous container is the softer pieces that I use. So I like having them on hand to to really work on staging photos, but I like keeping those things organized as well. All right, and then over here, paintbrushes, pretty simple. Then I have collage pieces that I'm collecting. Stickers, these are um, enamel stickers or 3D stickers right here. These are extra sticker books. And then down here, I have stickers organized. This is primarily alpha stickers, all organized by shape and type. So all my stickers right on hand, 
right there. And then, like I said, over here is my printer, some different printer supplies. So basic, basic printer paper, things like that. And then, you know, your run of the mill office supplies that we all have on hand at different times. So I just recently changed the setup of the top of my desk and I am loving it. I am collecting these ceramic pots. I believe they're probably for succulents, but they work really well for holding all of my markers and pens that I love to use and it adds a nice colorful touch to my craft room. I also love these acrylic drawers. Primarily in here would be Felicity Jane pieces that I like to keep separate. I have a whole drawer for the This Is Us line, which is super inspiring from Paper House. Um, these are some vinyl stickers that I'm collecting and some journaling cards from Paper Person are right there. You can see I really like changing up the containers. I like that these add some interest and personality to my craft room. Over here, um, these are the pens I use the most in this little spinny um, container right there. And that's the microphone I use for recording voiceovers for YouTube. Um, let's see. The other thing over here, this is a light that I got from Target a long time ago, but all the light bulbs in my craft room, I have switched out to Ott lights so that it's a really crisp light. And then this is a filming arm that I can swing over and film directly on this desk setup. So I have two different places that I can film in my craft room, which is nice to be able to change it up. I actually started organizing my stencils on these hangers about a year and a half ago, and it is fantastic. It's a great way to remind me to use my stencils because I can see them and I can flip through them really easily. They're organized by company and type. And then of course is my pegboard. This was the first big feature that was added in my craft room after we put the desk in. My husband helped me build it. I just recently rearranged everything, but it is phenomenal for storage and for just inspiring me. I love seeing everything organized rainbow color wise. I have some miscellaneous paints up top, some um, pit brush pens, watercolor pencils, up here are some Jane Davenport inks, my Nouveau drops that I'm loving recently. This is all cards that have been sent to me that I absolutely love. Some are from subscribers, some are from friends, and I love having them on display. And then of course, one of my favorite areas, some different distress tools, uh, colored pencils, all my handmade modern. Yes, I have a lot. I love that acrylic paint. And then that's all Jane Davenport acrylics in the back. So I love my pegboard, my typewriter slides right underneath, and then just some extra bits and bobs that I have um, on hand. As I mentioned before, planning is a newer passion of mine. So I actually picked this up. It's one of those pot lid holders I was talking about earlier. These are planners that I'm currently using in different capacities. This keeps it really organized. It allows me to just pull out what I need, slide it back in, everything stays in place. So I'm loving that solution. And then as we move around, I have some inks. These are all my Distress Oxide inks along with a few other different brands. And this is actually just an old cassette tape holder that I found at a thrift store for $12. And it works perfectly for holding all those ink pads and some wooden stamp storage right there. As we move along, this is a smaller pegboard that I created um, with my husband to complement the larger one because I needed some more space. I used to have mixed media on here, but my mixed media collection grew and grew and needed a different space. So now I use it to display my tag ring projects. So these are different projects that I've created over time and I think it's so fun that they're actually out in my craft room that they're displayed and then I can see them and enjoy them. And there's room to grow, creating mini albums, mini tag rings. Um, that's one of my favorite things to do recently. So it's awesome to have a space to display them and to enjoy them. All right, as we move around, I have a couch. This actually pulls out. So this room can still function as a guest room, which is awesome. And it has been used as a guest room since it turned into my craft space and people tend to really like it. Um, I have over here just some letter boards, some different decorations. This is my vision board for 2021. I have a whole video on how I set that up. 
These are a new addition to my craft room. They are actually embroidery hoops that I have set up that hold all of my pins from By the Well for God and then some other gorgeous pins that I have been collecting. I love them. I think they're so pretty displayed like that. And then I have a magnet board that again, I've had for a while. It was in my classroom, I believe, as a teacher. And so I was able to just bring it to my craft space when I started um, staying home with my kiddos. And then another new addition in 2020 was a sewing machine. I am actually not really much of a seamstress, but I do like to sew paper. So I have this sewing machine that lives on this cart, a Lexington cart from Michaels. Then I have my die cutting machine from Jane Davenport. I don't have very many dies, but they live right next to it. Below that are some extra storage pieces, a new fun project with wax seals that I'm starting soon, and then some random sewing supplies right there. And then I have my planner bag. This is for when I am helping my kids with virtual school, planning on the go, moving to different parts of the house. Love my planner bag. It kind of lives right there. I pack it up when I need to go somewhere else in the house and then um, I'm ready to go. So that is my craft room for 2021. I tried to go quickly just so that this would not be a forever long video. I'm gonna be doing a series of videos that are a little bit more in depth. So if you have questions, make sure to let me know in the comments below and I will try to answer them. I will again add links that I can find. If you're looking for a particular item, be sure to ask me and I will see what I can find for you. Okay, now that you've seen my craft room tour, you know that I have a passion for creativity and for organization. I truly believe that having an organized space makes me more creative, inspires me to um, jump in and do projects, and I just love having my space organized. And that is what spurred me on to create my new online course, which is all about um, putting together your dream craft space. You don't need to have a whole room. I believe even if you have a corner, a wall, a closet, you can create a dream space that inspires you every day in your creative journey. And that's what I wanna help you with. We're gonna go through a step-by-step -step process on how to sort everything in your space, how to organize your thoughts and make a plan. And then I will provide specifics on how you can organize some different elements in your craft space, tips and tricks that I use to create a space like this. Along with the full course, you receive videos and printouts that will help you work through step-by-step -step creating your dream craft space. No matter what size space you have to work with, I promise I can help you maximize that space. You'll also have access to an exclusive Facebook group that I've put together. It'll be for only people that are taking the course. In that group, you'll be able to ask questions, specific issues you might be having. You'll be able to support each other, cheer each other on. We'll have some different challenges going on. It's gonna be a really fun place to be. And again, you gain access to that group when you purchase the course. Like I said, this is something I'm really passionate about. I would love it if you would check it out. I definitely have it linked below. Before February 5th, I'm offering a pre-sale price of 20% off for the course. So you'll definitely want to check that out. Thank you so much for joining me today. I loved getting to show you my craft space, my happy place, the place I love. I hope that you have a fabulous day and as always, keep it creative.